Hello students, looking at current affairs for 21st April, the news items picked up from the Hindu newspaper are these eight. We'll look at them in detail. The first one, speed of virus infection slows. Doubling time rises in 18 states. So doubling time is an indication of how quickly cases increase. So if doubling time is more, like Kerala has doubling time of 72 days, means after 72 days, number of cases will double. So that is good. So best performing state is Kerala. So average, national average doubling time is 7.5 days. And what the government has come up with now is that 18 states and union territories have shown improvement in containment of COVID-19 pandemic by increasing their doubling time. So Kerala is at number one. Second comes Odisha at 39.8 days. But uh, if you look at it, these 18 states and union territories account for only 7,000 of India's overall COVID-19 cases. And just five states have faster doubling rate than national average and they account for about 10,000 or about 60,000 of the or about 60 percent of the cases in the country so five states together account for 60 percent of the cases and the topmost state with highest number of cases is Maharashtra it has 4,666 cases and its doubling time is six days and Gujarat has doubling time of only 4.5 days Madhya Pradesh has doubling time of 5.5 days and maximum number of cases are in Maharashtra, then comes Delhi. Though Delhi's doubling time is less, uh, means high, on a high end, means it takes more time to double. But still, Maharashtra, Delhi, followed by Delhi and Tamil Nadu, along with Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh, these are the five largest contributors to cases. Central government has also constituted six inter-ministerial central teams. So these are teams, two, uh, six teams are there, two for West Bengal and Maharashtra, one for Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan and uh, you know there are others too for these states so that the outbreak could be combated in this high uh, incident cases. So this is you can see state wise. Uh, uh, so this chart here shows the day wise progression of cases since the 250th case in each state. So you can see the number of days since the 250th case. So how cases have been increasing after that. So, you know, this is like two days since the 250th case, They're coming to 22 days. So, you can see Kerala is, have number of cases increase has been lowest in Kerala and maximum in Maharashtra. Gujarat comes here, you can see Rajasthan, Delhi, Madhya Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, lie here. And this is number of tests conducted per million people. So Delhi has conducted maximum tests, you can see. Then comes Maharashtra, uh, Jammu and Kashmir, Rajasthan, and so on. The next is DU donation for Prime Minister National Relief Fund sent to PM Cares. So there was an appeal for donations to Prime Minister's National Relief Fund from University Grants Commission, UGC and Delhi University. So one day salary of DU staff was deducted for this purpose. So DU Vice Chancellor has now said that the collected money amounting to more than 4 crore rupees was sent to PM Cares Fund instead, not to PM National Relief Fund. So DU staff has said that this is uh, unacceptable because appeal was made in the name of uh, contribution to Prime Minister National Relief Fund and it has been submitted to another thing. So what is the difference between the two is given here. You can see it is PM Cares which has been uh, formed as a charitable trust in 2020 with PM Modi as chairman, while Prime Minister's National Relief Fund was established by the first Prime Minister of the country, Jawaharlal Nehru, in 1948. So, you can see the PM Cares Fund was actually established by Indian National Congress President, and in 1985, the Rajiv Gandhi government gave complete control of it to the PM, Prime Minister's office. So here it is the PM, Prime Minister, who gives recommendations and it is his discretion based on which the allocation of the money is done to selected beneficiaries. While here PM cares has the Prime Minister, Defence Minister, Home Minister and Finance Minister as members. Eminent members from fields of science, health, law, public works can also be nominated. And PM cares trust takes decisions on allocations and selecting beneficiaries work, working together. So that's that. And both donations to PMKs as well as donations to Prime Minister National Relief Fund are completely exempt from taxes. Also, donations by companies are classified as corporate social responsibility, CSR under Company Act for both. 
and here also pm national relief fund it says accounts are not audited by cag and how even pm cares financial accounts how they will be audited is not clear yet no detail has been given the next is arogya setu app must for laborers says central public works department so central government organizations involved in construction including various metro rail corporations have instruct have been instructed by central public works department to ensure that all labor personnel staff returning to work from 20 april 2020 should download government's covid 19 tracking app arogya setu so uh, construction workers and other staff have been allowed metro rail staff have been allowed to resume work but cpwd central public works department that says they should have arogya setu app so this is an app that connects the people of india so setu is like a bridge arogya means health free of diseases so this app connects the people of india with health services so its, it's tagline is also you can see here protect one protect all protect india so what features does this app have it's it gives precision tracking of the spread of covid-19 it gives access to curated and relevant advisory from the government it, there's a self assessment test for infection mitigation so you can assess your assess yourself and help and support is also provided so you can see this is the app so you take the self assessment test and it uh, declares you as safe so that's it so it's actually a tracking app as such to covid-19 tracker The next is Nakash artisans of Nirmal town hit hard by lockdown. So, with no work and faced with uncertain future, Nakash artisans of Nirmal town of Telangana and Dhokra metal casters of Adilabad district of Telangana and Kumran Bhim Masakabad district of Telangana are pleading to government for help. So, Nakash artisans they specialize in making these famous softwood toys, also known as Nirmal toys, and they are known for their unique Nirmal paintings too. and dhokra metal casters make these metal castings so they these artifacts actually sell and tourists are the ones which are major contributors to their income but now it is being seen because of covid-19 and tourism been affected they are they are been suffering and pleading help from the government so these are nirmal toys these are softwood toys on the first toys and this is regarding dhokra art it is bell metal it's the earliest no it uses the earliest known method of metal casting which has been used in harappan civilization to indus valley civilization so this dhokra metal casting it's it's lost wax technique which is used so this is said to be perhaps the only living tradition of metal image making in eastern india the technique has managed to survive many centuries and change of dynasties owing to its modesty of application in everyday lives of traditional tribal people of the country so uh, lost wax technique is used in many states like this is about telangana dhokra art it is used even in chhattisgarh madhya pradesh and artwork is done with hand without any advancement of technology so here you can see dhokra is non ferrous metal casting made with lost wax technique so they are copper and brass based alloys and products are named as dhokra because metal smiths who make the products are dhokra amar tribes so these you can see dhokra they are made even in chhattisgarh and here we are talking about dhokra art from telangana so this is it so dhokra art is it's performed is used in various states in the country and adilabad dhokra adilabad from telangana adilabad dhokra also has gi tag as well as chatisgarh dhokra that is from bastar in chatisgarh so bastar dhokra is also gi tag Then next is Maharashtra government cracks whip on Palghar mob lynching. So Maharashtra Chief Minister Udhav Thakre has said that stern action will be taken against those involved in the lynching of three men by a group of villagers in Palghar district in Maharashtra over suspicion that they were thieves. Two policemen have also been suspended because they allowed the uh, the car to move ahead despite there being a lockdown. So these three men were killed and they did not use the main road to because there was lockdown. So they were moving from. Uh, Maharashtra from Mumbai to Gujarat and on the way they were uh, lynched so these three men included two sadhus and their cab drivers and more than 100 people have been detained by the police for their involvement in the crime the next is 17 killed in 12 hour rampage by gunmen in Nova Scotia in Canada so a gunman who at one point masqueraded as a policeman killed at least 16 people in Nova Scotia during a 12 hour rampage this is said to be country's worst modern era mass shooting then next is 
Europe begins easing lockdowns. So Germany and other parts of Europe have taken tentative steps to ease lockdown measures on 20th April. India also initiated easing of measures on 20th April and Europe has also. So, but then it has been warned that uh, battle against COVID is far from over. So some shops reopened, even parents dropped their children off to nurseries in Norway. So steps have been taken to ease the lockdown. But Chancellor Angela Merkel of Germany says, that staying disciplined was important because it, we are standing at the beginning of the pandemic and there is a still long way to go when we are out of the problem, out of the woods. You should know that two-third of the victims of COVID-19 are from Europe, across the world. And lastly, this is RBI raises ways and means advances limit for April to September. So for the first half, six months, first half of the current financial year 2020-21, RBI has increased the ways and means advances limit from 1.2 lakh crores to 2 lakh crores. So this is due to COVID-19 pandemic. We have discussed ways and means advances earlier too. We will speak about it once again now. So if you recollect, then uh, we have come across ways and means advances earlier too. Ways and means advances, what is it? We will see these are temporary advances, overdrafts which are extended by RBI to government. So RBI gives this provision to both central and state government. So there is a deficit which government faces in receipts and expenditures. So it, they are not source of finance as such, but means to provide support for temporary difficulties that arise on account of mismatch. So they are periodically adjusted and this has been started since 1997. So government of India and RBI have signed an agreement putting an end to ad hoc treasury bill system. So ad hoc treasury bills were initiated and that resulted in accumulation. So instead of that, ways and means advances have been proposed since 1997. So government has given, is been given only temporary provision. So ways and means advances, if you look at it, in pre previous financial year, 2019-20, in the first half of the financial year, ways and means advances uh, extended was of 75,000 crores. And for the present financial year, in the first half, it was said that it would be 1.2 lakh crores. And now it has been further extended by RBI and it has been increased to 2 lakh crores for the first half of the present financial year. So ways and means advances limit has been raised by RBI to ease or to facilitate the government to fight COVID-19. So that is it. Thank you.